Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be a DIY experiment into an arm lock putting style. Been interested in arm lock putting techniques, and so I'm going to take this old putter, an old Odyssey, and I'm going to convert it into an arm lock style putter. We're going to talk about the setup of arm lock putters, what kind of specs this type of a project involve, what kind of considerations you should make when selecting a putter to convert, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and take a look at an arm lock style putter and see if we can do a little bit of a dive into the specifications, how these putters work, some of the considerations you need to make. Now, if you're familiar with this technique has been used by guys like Bryson DeChambeau and Matt Kuchar and others. And typically if you look at your left forearm here, you want to take the shaft of the putter and press it into the left forearm, kind of the arm locking against the shaft. Now this is a 35 inch putter, which is standard. And typically you have three or four degrees of loft, uh, which is to be standard loft and lie. Uh, now those three variables, length, loft, and lie, are pretty critical and are going to be need to be adjusted to, uh, in a pretty significant way for arm lock style putting. Add to that also is going to be head weight. Typically those variables are going to need to change a lot with arm lock putting. And uh, you're going to want to make those changes as follows. So first of all, you're going to want a heavier head weight uh, because when you add the lengthier shaft, that's going to run up your arm, you're going to affect the overall balance. And so if you have a traditional maybe 350 gram head weight, the putter is going to feel very light as you swing it. So the heavier head weight, maybe something in the range of 400 grams, is going to feel a lot better to swing with the lengthier shaft. Now this 400 gram heavier head weight is um, kind of a critical variable that's something you need to look for and you're going to want that to help counterbalance the length that you're adding. And, and really that kind of means that not every putter off the rack would go well. Next, let's talk about loft. You know, typically if you set your hands in this area with maybe a slight bit of forward press, then you can, then you're going to maybe want to use about three to four degrees of loft. But if you're going to arm lock, if you draw a line up the shaft, it's going to go this way and you're going to be adding forward press. That forward press means that now with three degrees of loft, your dynamic loft is now going to be negative and you're going to be hitting the golf ball down into the ground and you're not going to be getting a very pure roll. So typically with an arm lock system with the forward press, you need to add loft going from three or four degrees up to maybe six or seven or eight degrees of loft. So by making that change, you're really going to be getting that same true and over end roll right away to help you get consistent speed. So next, let's talk about length. The typical 35 inch putter has a little bit of a hunch over. Um, you can get some different options here. You can get some grips that can be added that'll kind of prop three or four inches in this direction to give you kind of fill the space here like a cushion. So your hands can be in its traditional position. Instead, I'm going to be actually using a shaft like this. This is the 50 inch golf works putting shaft that you sometimes would see. Uh, and if I had it, I put it on the club here like this, you can see this is a very long kind of a broomstick style putter or even a belly putter type shaft. And so my goal and intention is when I put it to the head, I'm going to measure it up against the crook of my elbow here, right where the bone of my elbow joint is in order to comply with the rules. Um, you know, so we're probably going to be somewhere in the length of 39 to maybe 45 inches, depending on how much I bend over, how much I forward press, how my stance is. You know, if you're bending over a little bit more, or if you're more upright, uh, all those variables will come in and we'll, we'll really fit it to myself and what feels comfortable. And you think about your elbow here, uh, you don't want it to go past the elbow joint and it, you want it to stay um, against the left forearm. Lastly, let's talk about lie angle. If you're making all these other changes, uh, you're going to need to think about how that's going to affect the lie angle upright. Now, typically, a uh, arm lock style putter, you know, you not only are you going to be having some forward press, but it's also very likely that you're, uh, the, with a typical lie angle, the butt of the grip is going to go too far inside, and it's not going to ride up the forearm correctly. You needs to be scooted forward. It needs to be more upright so that the toe is sitting flat. So a little more upright line angle. So to review all the changes, we need heavier head weight. We need a, a seven or eight degrees of loft. We don't want a more upright line angle. 
and we want the length to be to kind of tailored to your fit. So all those things together should give you a nice arm lock style putter. So next I want to talk about some of the putters that I was looking at that I think were good candidates to consider if you're wanting to do this. I think technically in theory you could take any putter and convert it, but some are maybe going to be easier than others. And so uh, first up would be the Odyssey Tank series. One of the reasons why I picked it is because they are relatively inexpensive and widely available to be found in a bunch of different head shapes. Um, and But they also, the best thing about them is that they have the head weight. Um, they also are sometimes meant to have longer shafts, right? So some of them could be up to 40 inches, which may be pretty much perfect for this. Um, but then I, I really think a lot of them come with a much heavier head weight. And, you know, you can see here about a 400 gram head weight. So uh, that's actually the one that I chose. I got a kind of a Newport style or a number one, Odyssey number one style. Uh, and I'm pretty familiar with this. So easy to work with, easy to find, widely available and expensive, and has a nice head weight. Also, I'll mention something like this, because this is a belly putter. If you go on eBay and find belly putters, you know, this is a 90 gram head weight. It's got this adjustable hosel here, which should be easy to bend. Um, and, and also belly putters typically are, are made with longer shafts and heavier head weights. So just a couple of maybe suggestions or, or considerations to make when thinking about picking a putter, you know, maybe what I would stay away from would be like a really old school ping answer. You know, those things are probably going to be like 315 grams and you put a long shaft on it and it's going to feel really, really light. Or also I would be a little slow. You know, you want to think about the hosel, right? Um, I don't know if I would want to do a hosel like this just because I'm not this familiar with bending it. Whereas, um, you know, uh, uh, the putter style that I've gone with has that plumber's neck on it, which I think is going to be really easy to bend and really easy to work with. So those are just some of the considerations I was making when picking out my putter. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First step is going to be to take the old shaft off of my new putter head. This is my Odyssey tank number one. So I've got a rubber shaft clamp. We're going to be put it in the vise like this. I'm going to screw the vise in as follows. We're going to get the blowtorch out, light it up, and nuke it until the glue melts and the head comes off. Let's rock and roll. All right, I got my fire starter here. We'll click this and light up the torch. My torch looks like it's getting a little bit low, but we're going to give it the best shot nonetheless. Let's go ahead and clean out a little bit of the debris and gunk that is left over inside the, the hosel of the neck, so to speak. So in order to do that, I like to use this tool. It's uh, like a plumbing pipe cleaning tool, which you could probably find at a local hardware store. And it's really important to get that out to make a good glue bond. So um, just give this guy, like I said, you can get a little plumber's cleaning tool and... Uh, Stick it in here, it's work it around, work it around to get a lot of the gunk off and clean it out as best as you can. And then I use the screwdriver to take out some of these bigger chunks of residue that are left over, kind of some of this glue thing. And uh, that's going to really give us a long ways towards getting a much better and more stable glue joint. So we really want to work out all these little pieces and all these little things to get the sides of the metal as well and receptive to the glue as we possibly can. So after I'm done with that, then I actually have another tool. This is a little drill bit that I got from Golfworks that has that same cleaning action on the end, but it has a chuck that it can be installed inside a drill driver. So I pop this in my drill, cordless drill, and I give it a couple spritz here inside just to really make sure that all the dust and particles inside here get out with a little bit more of this power tool action. Alright, next step now after that is take the new shaft, verify that it fits, hoping that it's a relatively snug fit. 
This one has a tiny little bit of play uh, looseness. You can see rocking it back and forth. Um, you know, it's possible. I'd say this is probably within spec, but um, you know, the putter shaft, I think this is going to be fine for my purpose. I and you know that getting the lie angle a little more upright than standard is a priority, so I'm going to lean it, prop it up as I glue dries to get maybe just a couple degrees of upright lie angle. So I think I should be all right. <laughs> All right, so now I've got my epoxy here, which I'm getting set up. Uh, before I did that off camera, I did also take some sandpaper and I braided the end to just get the tip of the shaft ready to go. And so now this is my epoxy. This is golf work epoxy. It's a two part one to one. And what I do is I draw a little bead here, and just kind of a straight line, guesstimating how much I'll need with the black first. And then I take the clear and I try to make the same line. Um, this isn't a perfectly scientific way to do it, but I find that it does work well enough uh, to make nice strong bonds and I haven't had anything fail uh, doing using this method. Then next I take a toothpick um, and I then start to mix it up together really nicely to get uh, the, the proper mix. And if I did have found that one thing you do want to do is mix this sucker up about as well as you possibly can. I try to count to 30 uh, just to give it your really, really thorough mix. All right, now with my epoxy ready, I take a little bit of it and put it inside the hosel and try to spread it around on the inside. Um, this is a pretty short little hosel, so you do want to make sure you get some good coverage. Then I try to paint the tip here of this shaft with epoxy, and uh, and we just insert it. And I like to give it a little bit of spin as I go through, just a little bit of a wiggle. Make sure I'm trying to cover and coat everything as possible. Then I go to try to set it down in its final resting spot as it dries. And then I'll get a paper towel. I try to wipe off the excess. I found that you really want to be thorough and wipe off every little bit of glue that you possibly can because this is the time to do it. Once the glue dries, it's a lot harder to deal with. All right, here we are a day later, the glue is dried, and I've got my little angle gauge, and uh, this is it. I'm gonna set this up to try to get myself a rough estimate of the loft of the putter, see where we're at, and give me a bit of a point of reference to know where I'm starting from. And so uh, yeah, I've done a little bit of modifications to this. As you can see, this is sitting at about three degrees of loft. So this is perfectly dead stock to give us a baseline to where we're starting from. All right, so now for bending. This is kind of the getaway to do it. You see I got two wrenches. The first wrench is an adjustable wrench that's going to be attached directly to the neck like this. And then the second wrench comes along and basically serves to give me some leverage on the first wrench. So these two together should give me something to push against. So you can see now I'm just pushing and pushing and pushing. Got the, the putter locked in my woodworking vise. And then I've got these two wrenches. And I just kind of spent some time twerking on this. And you can see the putter shaft is moving. And actually, uh, this is not really not the best way to do um, some bending. But I would definitely say that this worked. And it did work just completely fine. Uh, maybe it took a little bit of fine tuning here to find the sweet spot to get it to work just right. But um, with a little bit of elbow grease, you can see it right there. It's bending really without a problem. And it uh, worked pretty darn good. I would say maybe one of the downsides is I don't have a great way of really making sure that my measurement is exact. So if you need to make a precise adjustment, uh, this is a little tough. But uh, so far, so good. So now I, I put it back into my little jig to try to measure the lie angle. And I've gotten it up from about 3 degrees up to about 7. Actually, I think my first go around, I got it up to about 5 or 6 degrees. And then I came back later and further adjusted it to about seven degrees so i do think that amount of loft is pretty good for the amount of forward press in ball position that i'm using <laughs> All right, now let's talk about how I approach the process of making it the correct length. Basically, I've got the full length shaft here and I'm measuring to the bone of my left 
elbow, the kind of the crook of my left elbow. And I think according to the rules, that's about as maximum as I can go. But I'm trying to figure out now if I stand pretty upright, you know, I want to, I want to lean towards giving myself the most amount of room because it's always easy to cut it down further, but it's difficult to add it back on. So we're going to cut this a little bit high. Um, so if I find the crook of my elbow here with a pretty upright stance, I'm going to make a brown mark and that's where we're going to cut it. So now if I measure that, that gives me a rough estimate of, I believe, about 46 inches of length, which is definitely on the longer side. But uh, like I said, I want to give myself a little extra room, and I can always cut it down from there. All right, so now is my process for cutting the shaft. I've got a Dremel tool, and I've got a little metal cutoff wheel. And I basically go around my line, as you can see, and uh, just trim off this shaft. Slowly but surely I go around, and sure enough, there it goes. I give it a little squaring up here, but overall, no problem. We've got the right length shaft. Just giving it a little bit of a quick test here, and I think this is going to be a good starting point. Uh, feeling pretty good to start. <laughs> All right, next up is to grip the shaft. You can see I put a number of layers of blue masking tape on, and I probably put two or three layers of blue masking tape, and then I've got a can of mineral spirits that I spray generously. Then I've got my grip. This is a 21-inch wind grip, and I've got my air compressor, and I put the air compressor in the butt of the grip, and then I use the air compressor to blow it on as I push it and slide it down. And so uh, it works pretty good. I do anticipate that I might have to tweak this a little bit, so I do like to blow the grip on with air. And I found that if I have a little bit of positive pressure from the inside with, with the grip tape, kind of pushing the grip out, then uh, I'm pretty hopeful that it'll fit pretty good. So that'll give me the chance, though, if I want to come back and tweak it or adjust it, I can do that. <laughs> Thank you. 